Now that we have a way to measure convergence, or more specifically, the asymptotic convergence of sequences, we're ready for some bad news about the iterative methods we've been talking about for the last several lectures. I've got a theorem here that, that tells us uh, about the convergence of our iterative methods. And, and once again, it, it looks like there's a lot going on here, but most of this we've actually seen before if you've been following along with previous lectures. Uh, this part here, for example, uh, this is just our box criterion. This says that the graph of the function is going to stay in the box defined by the interval from A to B on the x-axis and that same interval on the y-axis. And that part just guarantees that a fixed point is going to exist. Uh, and the second part here about the continuity uh, of the derivative and, and this, this limit that the absolute value of the derivative is going to be uh, strictly less than or equal to k where k is a constant less than one we, again we've seen that before that's just guaranteeing that the sequence we get from iterating a point starting on that interval from a to b is going to converge to that fixed point the new part here is this bit the part where the derivative is not equal to zero right that's the part that's going to put the bound on the convergence and that's the last sentence here the final conclusion is that if these conditions are all met then the best we can possibly hope for in terms of convergence is for it to be linear. All right, so let's see how we can prove this. In the corner up here, I, I've just got the definition of linear convergence. And I put it there just as a reminder, that's the goal that we're trying to get to. So to get there, think about the values P and P sub n. Since G is continuous, the mean value theorem says that there has to be a number between p sub n and p, such that this is true. Right? The difference of the function values is equal to the derivative at that point, x sub n, times the difference of the p values. Now remember that the sequence x sub n converges to p. So if you look back at the inequality, the left side converges to p, and the right side, the constant term p, also converges to p. So by the squeeze theorem for sequences, the sequence of x values must also converge to p. All right, so next, think about what that says about the derivative. If we look at the sequence that we get from taking the derivative of those x values, since the sequence of x values converges to p and g prime is continuous at p, that means that the limit of g prime of x sub n as n goes to infinity is just g prime of p. All right, quick aside here, for those of you who back when you were in, in second semester calculus were, were asking yourself, why am I learning all these theorems about convergence of sequences? This is why. Right, we're going to be using them all over the place throughout this entire class. All right, so now let's switch back over uh, to our mean value theorem result here. Remember that g of p sub n is just p sub n plus 1, and g of p is just p. Right, now, if we solve this equation for g prime, we get this equation. Right? g prime of x sub n is equal to the ratio of those p values. And hopefully now you're starting to, you're starting to get an idea where we're going to end up, because that expression on the left-hand side very similar to what we've got up there uh, in, in the upper right hand corner that statement that i said is what we were ultimately aiming for now if we take the limit uh, of both sides of this as n goes to infinity we get the limit of the ratio is just equal to g prime of p since all we care about is the magnitude of the results we can add absolute values to all of these parts and while i don't know exactly what g prime of p is Based on our initial assumptions about the derivative, I know it's on the open interval from 0 to 1, which means that the convergence is going to be linear. So ultimately, uh, that may seem like some pretty bad news, right? I mean, linear convergence is okay. It's not, it's not like it's horrid, uh, but it's not the quadratic convergence uh, that, that really is kind of the, the gold standard that we're always searching for. However, there is a loophole here, right? and it's that new condition that I've, I've still got underlined here, this condition that the derivative can't be zero uh, at the final solution, at the fixed point. And it turns out 
that loophole was going to be big enough for us to slip through uh, and come up with a method that actually is going to get us that quadratic convergence that we're really hoping for. In the next lecture, we're going to take a look at a new method for finding the solutions to equations called Newton's method, named after Sir Isaac Newton. Uh, we're going to start off just talking about the method and looking at some examples of how it works. Then we're going to switch back over to thinking about convergence again, and we'll see how Newton's method manages to slip through that little loophole that the theorem left us.